What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of the Budding Watch Enthusiast. So last week, I put out the call uh, for some viewer questions so we could do our first ever mailbag segment this week. You guys did answer the call. Thank you very much for doing so. Uh, so we will have some, some of your questions to go over, some excellent questions that we had dropped in there this week as well that I'm looking forward to getting to. Last weekend, of course, um, I did go to the District Time Microbrand Showcase down in Washington, D.C. Met a couple of you guys down there. Thank you so much for those of you that came up and said hello. Uh, definitely made my day a little bit. And it was my birthday as well, so that was a very one of the more fun birthdays that I've had recently. I usually end up at, uh, at work on my birthday, typically. And I, I guess I was working as well, but it was a lot more fun work. Uh, but a great time, great time was had. Um, look forward to a video for that next week. Before we get into the mailbag, a quick wristwatch check. I am wearing my Hamilton Khaki Field uh, Day-Date Automatic, AKA the Desert Eagle. Um, haven't worn this in a, about two weeks, actually, for whatever reason. It just hasn't made its way out of the watch box. Uh, but today seemed like a good day, and we're actually gonna be talking about uh, Hamilton watches in one of the questions this week from the mailbag. So yeah, this is something that I that I wanna do occasionally, this mailbag segment. Um, and again, thank you guys for those of you that submitted questions this week. The big fear when you're a young channel and you put yourself out there like that the first time is that no one's going to respond, but I did get a couple really good questions. Uh, if you missed last week's video, if you missed out on this mailbag, don't worry. It's something I plan on coming back to at some point, maybe even a live version uh, if the demand is there for you guys to want to see that happen. So we will, uh, we will look into this down the road. But uh, four questions from you guys this week. Let's get right into it. So our first question comes from Brad, excellent first name by the way. Uh, he says, what watch are you researching and obsessed with right now? Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, Brad, uh, for, the, for the comment there. So the, the watch, it's, it's not even a single watch that I'm kind of obsessed with that, I'm, that I've been researching a lot right now. It's more of a brand. I mentioned this brand when I did one of the Chrono Questions videos a couple months ago and that brand is Manta. And Manta's watches look incredible. Um, they have three watches in their line right now, the Triumph, the Ocean King, and the Sky Quest. Um, I'm really partial to the Triumph and the Sky Quest. And they just seem really, really solid. Like I said, Manta's a micro brand. Um, they're, they're a little pricier than most micro brand watches are, but that's because they're using top grade at a movements inside of their watches. So they should be super accurate. Uh, I think their designs are fantastic. I'm actually really looking forward to being able to get hands-on time with one of their watches. I think they're gonna be at the Worn and Wound Wind-Up Festival in New York uh, at the beginning of November, which I am planning on attending. I'm hoping that I'm able to, to get up there. Uh, it's, it's tough uh, with my job to get off around that time of year, but uh, we're gonna see if I can do that. And yeah, if I do get to go, um, I'm going to really uh, check those guys out uh, with, <laughs> with Ernest because I can't wait to see. Uh, I, I really want to hold one. I really want to experience one and see what it's like to see if it really is worthy of the price tag that's put on them. Yeah, I just, I just think their watches are, are gorgeous and, and just really interesting. And I, just, I'm just, I really want to experience one. That's, that's what I'm aiming for right now. Uh, the other company that I'm looking at right now, the other watch that I'm looking at right now, uh, is actually going to be featured prominently in next week's video. Um, so it's going to be one of the watches that I saw at the District Time Show, and uh, and I'm going to wait to talk about that one until next week because I'm I'm pretty excited about it, uh, and I'll, I'm curious to see what you guys will think about it as well. But yeah, to answer your question, uh, Monza, the Triumph, and the Sky Quest right now look amazing, and I can't wait to find out and experience more with that watch. Flippin Zippo asks, uh, any disappointments so far? So. I guess it depends on how you quantify disappointments. Um, if you look at a disappointment as any watch that you know you acquired and and then end up selling on eventually uh, because you kind of lost the lost the luster for it, then I guess really the only disappointment that I've had so far is the Squally 1545 because um, I I do plan on moving that watch on and selling that watch very soon. But I, would, I wouldn't go as far to call it a disappointment because it was it lived up to the expectations that I had for it uh, when I acquired it. And I, and I kept it for a couple months pretty happily. It's just that I eventually got other watches that kind of filled the space in my collection 
that the 1545 did, so I didn't feel the need to, to really own it anymore. Um, to me, a disappointment would be a watch that you get, and then within like a couple of weeks, you, you just are like, oh, this didn't, this isn't what I thought it would be, and, and it's not really something that I want to hang on to. To me, that's a disappointment. I was worried uh, that the C60 Trident GMT was going to be that, because uh, like I said, I had that watch for a couple weeks and it didn't click with me right away. It eventually did, of course, once I traveled with it, once I took it on um, the business trip that I went on about a month ago. And for some reason, that just made it, <laughs> that made it work for me and it made me appreciate uh, that watch in a way that I didn't beforehand. Uh, but yeah, so far, no real disappointments. I, and I guess, too, the other reason that I tend to avoid that a little bit is because because I, I do research so thoroughly, because I am very patient um, before I will buy a watch, and because I kind of level set my expectations at a certain rate, it's very difficult to be disappointed. Um, I, I find in talking to people, most of the watches that people are disappointed by are ones that they bought impulsively and then just kind of had buyer's remorse uh, immediately upon receiving it and my the, my process and the way that I the, the way that I kind of go through things when I'm acquiring a watch um, tends to avoid that so nothing nothing major so far disappointment wise uh, this is a longer question from Jose uh, hi budding watch enthusiast I'm looking for an everyday field piece I'm between two Hamiltons the champagne dial khaki king or the khaki automatic I love the day-date complication in the King, but the water resistance does not give enough confidence, which the automatic does. Which piece would you prefer, or do you have other suggestions for the price and specs? Thank you, great channel. And again, that comes from Jose. Um, so Jose, my, my um, personal bias is going, to, uh, is going to intrude on this question quite majorly. First of all, if, if anyone asks me which field watch should they get? I, I want a field watch, what's, what's the best one out there? I would probably recommend a Hamilton first. Um, Hamilton, like I said, it's one of those brands with a lot of brand heritage, uh, very, you know, very iconic design, uh, very simple design, and with a field watch, which like an everyday watch that you're wearing, that's kind of what you want. I hate the Khaki King. I can't stand the Khaki King. I, I do not like the cutout uh, day date window, which you seem to like, uh, based on your question, to me that's the least favorite feature. My least favorite feature of that entire watch. The whole reason that I bought this uh, khaki day date is because it has a similar cutout, but it's a split cutout. Instead of having it grouped at the twelve o'clock position, both the day and the date, this one has a split one, uh, which is much more aesthetically pleasing in my eyes. So I, you're never going to find me recommending a Khaki King to anybody, not because it's a bad watch, just because my personal bias does not <laughs> let me do it because I just, I, I just hate that, that clustered uh, day-date combo. So if you're asking me, um, I would say that the, that the Khaki Field Automatic, just the standard uh, Khaki Field Automatic, maybe with the date window, uh, is the way to go. You talked about water resistance. Um, Obviously, the automatic is a little bit more robust in that respect, but for a field watch, for me personally, um, water resistance is not one of the big uh, selling points that I'm looking at. The only watch whose water resistance I ever really care about is a diver. Like, if I'm buying a diver, I'm going to want something, you know, over 200 meters ideally, just so that you know it'll stand up to any, any abuse that you put it through in terms of water. Uh, with the field watch, with any other type of watch, again, water resistance is not that big of a deal for me. As long as the watch has at least 50 meters of water resistance, that'll that'll stand up for mo in most instances for most people, for what most most people would be putting it through. Um, if I'm ever going to go swimming, I'm probably wearing a dive watch anyway, so it just has to be able to endure the conditions that it needs to endure in the field. If a field watch had 30 meters water resistance, that's not that's not what I'm looking for because 30 meters is basically that in a lot of cases that means no water resistance. So that that's that's what I would avoid. But for me, uh, the baseline is 50. This one is 50. Uh, the the day date auto that I have is 50. So I'm not I'm not too pressed about that personally. But yeah, like I said, I would tell you to get the automatic. Um, if you're looking for a different recommendation that's not Hamilton, uh, the one that I would point you towards would be the Hemel 
Arrowhead. Uh, this is a watch that I talked about in my video that I did where I proposed different price alternatives to the Rolex Explorer. Um, I love the clean layout of the Hemel Arrowhead. I think it's a, a very handsome watch. Uh, it has a couple different options in terms of the finish on the case, uh, so you can get that to your preference as well. Uh, so that's an alternative option if you didn't want a Hamilton. Um, but Hamilton is, I love Hamiltons. Uh, I, I think they're excellent. And yeah, you can't go wrong with the Hamilton uh, khaki field for sure. Finally, our last question comes from Dan O. Uh, Dan asks, how did you get into watches? Now, I think in other videos, I have touched on this story previously, um, but just the abridged version. So I'll give you the full version because uh, <laughs> the end of the story is pretty funny because it's a bullet, uh, you'll, you'll laugh because of the bullet that I dodged um, as it happens. So I've always owned a watch since I was like eight years old. Um, I know I've talked before about my, my father giving me his old Timex Iron Man. That was the first watch uh, that I ever had. And I, that's pretty much what I wore up until I was an adult. And then once I was an adult, I said, hey, I've, I should have a proper watch. Uh, I'm going to wear this, uh, I'm gonna get a fossil analog watch. And for the next decade plus, basically, for the next you know 12 years of my life, uh, that's what I wore, uh, was fossil watches. I had a couple fossil watches, got a diesel watch as well, uh, st which I still own a couple of those too. Um, but yeah, that was my watches and I was ignorant to the world of mechanical timepieces throughout this entire time. So, rewind uh, back to last summer and the, the itch was getting me to buy another watch. And I listened to podcasts incessantly. That's, that's really all I ever listened to in the car or when I'm working is just podcast, podcast, podcast. And if any of you listen to podcasts out there, you probably know uh, something you'll be inundated with in advertisements on podcasts is movement watches or MVMT watches because they are virally all over the place when it comes to you know, those ad sponsor ads that you see in, in newer media. So I remember I went to the movement website and I said, I'll check it out, we'll get 10% off. These watches seem pretty affordable. And, uh, and I was looking at their watches, I'm like, oh, some of these are pretty cool. And I was, I, I was fixed on buying a movement watch. I was gonna buy an MVMT watch, that was gonna be my next watch purchase. So as it happens, uh, my wife came home one day, she knew I was looking for another watch, and she said, hey, uh, a guy that I work with is starting, you know, starting his own watch company, and he's got a new watch that he's putting on Kickstarter soon, you should check it out if you're looking for a new watch. And she's like, I've seen it in person, it looks really cool, um, but give it a look-see. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll take a look at that. So, and of course, the, as most of you are probably, uh, as, as most of you are guessing where this is leading to, the Kickstarter that I stumbled upon was the Kickstarter for Sal Baltimore watches, which ran last August. And I remember looking at the Kickstarter page and looking at the watch, and I was intrigued by the fact that the watch didn't require a battery. Stupid me uh, assumed that all watches that existed in the world ran on battery power. Why I thought this, I have no idea. Uh, obviously, batteries and watches didn't exist until the late 60s, so I don't know why my, my dumb peanut brain didn't realize that watches had to be powered uh, in another fashion previous to the advent of batteries. Uh, but yeah, I, I literally assumed that every watch out there, Rolex, Omega, all this stuff, were all battery powered. And so I was, amazed to find this, this, this newfangled watch that's powered just by wearing it, just by having it on your wrist, keeps the watch wound and, and you never need a battery for it. I was like, well, that's really cool. It looks really cool. I like the looks of this watch, but man, is that watch really pricey? Because I believe on the Kickstarter, it was, I think, $275. And uh, it's funny looking back at that just a little more than a year ago, because me being like, man, $275 for a watch, that seems really up there. <laughs> it's just funny seeing where we got to now with that story. So I, I literally hemmed and hawed between do I want to get this Sal Baltimore watch or do I want to buy the MVMT watch uh, for, uh, for about half the price. And uh, I wasn't sure what I, 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 it's funny to say it now, but I really was, was torn between what I wanted to do. My wife eventually wore me down and convinced me that yes, the Sal watch costed way more, but it will probably last me a lot longer and it's probably a better quality. And so I reluctantly 
<laughs> I can't, I cannot tell you how, it's, it's still just so funny to think. I reluctantly uh, said, all right, and I, and I backed the, the Sal Baltimore watch on Kickstarter. And of course, as the story ends, um, I get the watch in December, immediately fall in love with it, immediately understand, like it just, uh, using it for a couple days, just immediately clicked why mechanical watches are awesome. And in doing research to find new watch straps for it, uh, stumbled upon this watch YouTube community, uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. And now I'm sitting here uh, talking to you guys just a short year later um, with you know a channel with 50 videos behind it already, and and this collection of watches, and only, my my interest in the hobby only growing by the day. So, yes, because my wife convinced me uh, that spending $275 on a mechanical watch was going to be a better value than buying a $125 MVMT watch. That's how I got into watches. Uh, perhaps the greatest bullet dodge uh, in my life to date so far was not getting that MVMT watch. And who knows uh, what may have happened had that, uh, had that, had that ghastly watch uh, made its way into my collection. That is it for our inaugural mailbag. Again, a segment that we will return to down the road at some point. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. If you found this video entertaining or informative, do me a favor and hit the like button right there you see down below. Also, if you're new to the channel, if you've not yet subscribed, click the red subscribe button and click the bell icon. That way you never miss an episode of The Budding Watch Enthusiast. And as usual, I ask you guys, if you've not yet followed me on Instagram, please do that by going to at Budding Watch Enthusiast, clicking the follow button, and uh, you can see some of the pics from the District Time Show. Uh, that I just posted the other day. Again, thank you very much for watching. I will see you the next time.